Hi everyone. Thank you all for coming and joining us as we celebrate Disability Awareness Month. It is my absolute honor to introduce to you today's speaker, Debbie Edelman. I'm so excited to be a part of her journey here at Highline College because Devin is a new student and she pursuing her interest in a career in marine biology. Um, today she's going to share with you more about her path to higher education and some of the unique and amazing opportunities that she's had along the way. At the end, she is going to welcome your questions. So if you're thinking of things that you want to know more about during the presentation, talk those down because Devin's going to be happy to answer those questions for you. So please join me in listening to Devin's journey to higher education and and how important it is for us all to remember how our beliefs and attitudes help to shape each other's dreams and their path to those dreams. Thank you, Julie. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad that you came today. I am Devin Adelman. I am a first year student in the RC program here at Highline. First, I thought I would take the opportunity to talk about Down Syndrome. October is National Down Syndrome Acceptance Month. How many of you know what Down Syndrome is? I happen to know a lot about Down Syndrome. Down Syndrome is a genetic condition. You cannot get Down Syndrome. It is not contagious. You have to be born with it. It is an, an extra copy of the 21st chromosome. So I have three copies, while most of you only have two. It has been around as long as history has been around. It is a syndrome. That means there are a lot of traits that are common in Down syndrome but not everyone has all of the traits. Just like the general population, there are a lot of differences. Everyone is unique. People with Down syndrome are people, not kids forever. Some traits are beautiful eyes, shorter height, flexible joints, low muscle tone, learning differences, childhood leukemia, Alzheimer's, very little adult cancer, and finally, very little heart disease. New opportunities, access to education, improved quality of life, employment, independent living, marriage, and longer li lives, increased by 40 years since the 70s. Questions about Down syndrome. I'm an expert, and so is my mom. <laughs> so on to being the odds and my journey to higher education. First, it starts with my family. Because my family always believes in me, with high expectations, and they will also be there to support me anyway and just let me try and try again. And then my teachers also believe in me. Because in elementary and middle school, I was included in academics, sports, and drama. Inclusion has been shown to help everyone learn better. Nathan Hale High School. We worked with Nathan Hale to have a great high school experience in and out of the classroom. And finally, my friends believe in me at every stage of life so far. I am determined. Ever since I was little, I have loved the ocean. I've been to a lot of aquariums and wanted to work in marine biology. So I needed to continue my education, starting with finishing high school. For my final year in high school, I had to choose a, a project. 
and I chose public speaking and advocacy. It turned into an unexpected journey. First, I spoke at Seattle Children's Hospital about Down syndrome. Then my family was asked to be keynote speakers at the, U at the United Nations in New York City for World Down Syndrome Day. Then we lobbied Congress in D.C. for education rights. My journey continued with a gold medal in unified soccer, senior prom, and graduation, and being accepted into the Achieve program at Highline College. My first choice school because it has a marine science program an invitation to the White House followed. I adventure continued with an opportunity to represent the Global Down Syndrome Foundation at the White House for the Being the Odds event for new graduates going further with education against expectations. The White House. I was in the White House with Michelle Obama and then President Obama came in as a surprise. Expectations. They asked me what was my biggest obstacle that I ever faced. Then I answered other people's doubts because they didn't see what I was capable of. My family, teachers, and coaches always believed in me because I am capable. It was, a, it was a little overwhelming. But a door was open. I can't tell where the journey will end, but I know where to start. Now that I'm here, college is a lot of work. But as I said, I am determined. The work so far, I am so determined. My commute to my classes are longer than my parents put together. I am the expert in public transit in my family. I take a bus to the link and then a second bus each way every day. Not everyone believed in me, but I did. Sometimes you have to try and if it doesn't work out, then you can just try again. Dream big. What is next for me? I hope to continue to learn. I hope to continue to advocate for everyone's rights. I hope to inspire others. I plan to be employed, move out, get married, and live happy ever after. Imagine the possibilities. You just have to find that door and open it. I ask that we treat each other the way we want others to treat us. I ask you to dream big for yourself. I ask that you believe in other people's dreams. Pass the flame. Together, unified, we can make a difference. Thank you so much for listening. And do you have any questions? <laughs> do you guys have any questions? Mom, can you help? <laughs> so, like, I don't know. Uh, I'm amazed that you're comfortable speaking in front of people too. Do you have any? Gosh, well, this all started with my senior year, so.
and it, it just really sparked a flame and it became a fire. So, yeah. Yeah. And lots of practice too. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes? Uh, how, how do you do with your homework and your reading? And, um, well, are you able to just go to the library, or you prefer to do it by yourself, or you ask for help? Where do you do most of your homework? Oh, homework? Oh, at home, and, and sometimes at school. And did you want to use, tell them that your not trick, but one of the things you've been using rather than reading all of these Oh yeah, while well, I've been reading all the assignments that I've been getting, I've been using YouTube to watch videos, to watch videos that actually are educational. Do you spend a lot of time doing it though? Most of your life goes in just doing your homework? Do you like to do your homework? Yes. <laughs> It's one of the things I got to say about Deb. She would always ask for homework, you know, in whatever class she was in, when she ended up um, in being with some less academic classes in high school, she was always ready for the teacher to give her more stuff to do. Deb is the, the third, or we have three kids and she's the middle kid. So I think she saw both sibs on either side doing homework. Um, and she's been a great example to her younger brother to do her home, to do homework and to try and try again. I think that's one thing that must be on the 21st chromosome because the determination is is all of her. Pretty amazing. Any other questions? Hi, Devin. Yes. My name is Sky, and I'd like to thank you for being here and speaking with us today. You did an amazing job. Thank you. My question: How did your one speech at Seattle Children's lead all the way to the White House and President Obama. That's just, how did, what? <laughs> Talk about that a little bit. I should say that, that it was very over, overwhelming with lots of joy and just believing in my friends, like, like my friends believe in me, so I just took that and just went for it. What was the process? Was there an application as part of the program or what? The, the, those are good questions, and I think the, the unexpected part was the unexpected part. Mm -hmm. um, the, the UN, I think, put us a little bit on the, the map of other people seeing us, um, and for that there was an application. Devin and I had planned to just uh, attend the conference because there is a World Down Syndrome Day conference that's held at the UN, so we wanted to be in the audience. And we had to fill out information um, about what we've been doing. So we put down that you you were going to speak at Seattle Children's, and she has spoken at the Buddy Walk a couple times, which is a fundraising walk for Down Syndrome awareness. Um, so when we put those down, then they contacted us and said, hmm, would you be willing to, you know, speak? And then at that point, it was just Devin and I going, and I was, I was like, okay, we can be on a family panel, I'm okay with that, we can, we can be up there with other people. And when we said yes to that, they said, well, actually, how about you guys be our keynote speaker? And at that point, I said to my husband, can you come with us, please, because I don't <laughs> want to do this by myself. Um, so we made it a family affair, and all of us went. It's just amazing how one thing leads to another, and then you're at the White House with President Obama taking a selfie. Like, <laughs> yeah. You're amazing, Devin. It has been pretty crazy. Thank you. When, when she started her, her senior year, we discussed it a lot, what she wanted to do, um, and the public speaking and advocacy was something you wanted, and I said, okay, well, if the opportunities arise, we're going to have to go for it and they just have kept coming. So it's been pretty crazy. Yes. Okay, so, so now you're an activist, like, you know, um, beating the odds, and it started with your senior project, and do you have any advice 
uh, for your teachers besides believing in you? Do you have any advice for teachers? Do you have any advice for teachers? Gosh, I would just say just believe in your students and see what that take as they take you. Right, and you, you told me that you like love homework. Why yes. do you love homework? <laughs> <laughs> well, I love homework because it's just part of me. And I just love to learn stuff. You don't like to learn everything. <laughs> I, I, I never stop. I just wanted to say to Devin, I'm very proud of you. You're doing, you did a great job, and you're still doing, you're going to be a great activist, and you already are a great activist, and you're doing, you know, awesome. So I just want to say that. Thank you, Evan. Uh, yes, Jenny? So my class is all I'm taking. Um, I have Noah's communication in the advocacy class. And also I'm taking oceanography, which was history as well. And I got an A plus in my oceanography class. And I, I got an A in, in um, I have Noah's class as well. So I'm, I'm just really proud of myself. And when I'm feeling stressed, I would just ask it a teacher if I could go outside and I just in this do some exercise or something to get to to clear my mind that that, that really helps a lot. And when and sometimes just listening to music too. Like asking if you can to listen to music, that can also help you get your mind on track instead of of losing your path. And, and, and just losing track on your work. So I would just say, uh, if you're feeling stressed about your, about your first quarter at Highline, I would just say, like, just take a breather and just go outside, sit down, listen to music, and, and, that, and that would do it. Yes? Another question I have for you is, if you have a time when there's a, a test or an assignment that you're really struggling with that you don't feel like you did that well, what do you do in those moments? Um, like if you're starting on a, on a test or a assignment, I would just ask the teacher if I can just go outside and or listen to music. Because uh, before you got your grades back, you were pretty stressed, mm -hmm. right? And how were you feeling, and how did you deal with that, um, that doubt about how you were doing? Mm -hmm. How would you say you dealt with that? Well, I was anxious, and sometimes I feel anxious about my assignments sometimes, and sometimes I just need to calm down, like take a breather, and just, and just keep going. Yeah. Hello, how are you doing? Doing good. Um, to kind of piggyback off of what this gentleman was saying, he's amazed. I, I believe the whole human race is amazed at what, what we call angels in the sky. And I believe every single human being has potential to be special. It's just the fact that we have to look within ourselves and be able to nurture what we're good at. And on your behalf, you found early what you were good at. And 
it's a, I believe in a certain philosophy that we're all put on this earth to leave a footprint. And the footprint is gonna determine how great you were and how shallow you were. Because all the paths that you crossed, the White House, the UN, all these great people before you and that's coming behind you that cross your path, they're gonna look at your footprint. And they're gonna determine how great you were from the depth of how deep the footprint was. You walk with a heavy footprint. And the people that come before you, they understand you're a great person. And the generation that's coming after you, yeah, you're paving the way. And I, I gotta say I'm proud of you. Thank you. For me, it's a bit stressful, but I know that college is a lot of work, and I just have to keep going with it. And if I get anxious, and if I'm like they're freaking out over it, and a test or an mm -hmm. assignment, I would just um, like listen to music or take a break, and then just come back to it, and then then just get it done. So do you think college is harder or easier than high school? I think, for me, I think college is a, a bit harder than high school. Was it nice to see any friends when you got here? Or, were you, or did you know anybody when you, when you came to school? When I came to school, I didn't know anyone. And I kept isolating myself because I, I just missed my friends from high school a lot. And I just miss my friends, and now I'm, and now I'm just looking back, and I still miss them. And now I know a couple of friends myself here in college. What are some ways that you can make some new friends here? Well, making new friends in college is a bit kind of easy. You just <laughs> I'm trying to go to clubs and try to join um, other unified sports as well, like doing like football. Even though I'm doing it with UW, but I'm gonna like, come back and do unified soccer with Highline and probably basketball as well if they can fund a team. <laughs> yeah. I don't really know. Um, I think Brandon would know the answer to that question more than, than I do. Any specific accommodations? I know we've done at home, we, we started doing the YouTube stuff instead of having to read all of the material, but that's right. not official. Thank you. 
think that was one of the, the differences between high school and college, because in high school, you can modify the curriculum and still get a grade, but in college, you can't modify the curriculum, but you can accommodate the way you take and not process the information, but the way you get the information. Um, and I think that was where we thought the YouTube or having video pieces would work really well, because Dev, you're a visual learner, mm -hmm. um, and having to read college level work is, is rough. Um, but a lot of that information is um, published uh, just on YouTube. You know, just you put in a couple of, of keywords into a YouTube thing, and pops up a cool video that's got animation and all kinds of good stuff. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of accommodations and ways that, so we all kind of accommodate ourselves. For those of you who don't know, an accommodation is something that levels the playing field in a classroom. But Deb, we found amazing ways, you've you said it throughout your presentation, you're determined. You're determined to learn. And part of being determined to learn and being successful about that is finding those ways to get the information that you need. And I love that you figured out, I'm going to learn better by seeing this. How do you figure, how do you develop these strategies, like using YouTube to learn the content of the class? And how do you know if those strategies are really the content of the class? Because that's, that's amazing, and I applaud you. And I, every student could take that kind of initiative in their learning and be getting more out of their classes. So what did you think of that? Well, when I actually, um, I was, doing an assignment for geography last night for Alinia. And I I found a way that if I don't want to read like all of it, so I d decided actually to type in the keywords into YouTube and that actually really helped me a lot just by watching a video on it. And I got an idea to actually do that and that actually helped me with my assignment. I think having a little brother who uses YouTube a lot was part of the inspiration. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess um, we like to switch a little bit uh, questions. Can you tell us something about any hobby that you have, maybe outdoors or something? What kind of hobbies do you have? Well, I love soccer, so sometimes I do soccer outside. Sometimes I throw a football around outside with, with my brother and my dad. And also, most of all, I love poetry because I'm a poet in my family, and I, I just love writing poems, and that really helped me a lot as well. And I, I'm probably going to start, I, I'm probably going to start, um, making my poem book, because I have a lot of poems that I have created. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Still says it's working. And my other hobbies are like playing basketball as well. Oh yeah, sometimes I actually go to a program called Young Life and I actually have some friends there as well. And oh yeah. Uh, and also I'm part of Special Olympics as well. And I've done soccer with them. I've done I done um, skiing as well. I love skiing. I've been skiing with the ski house for about three years now, and that's been amazing. So, yeah. Did you ask a question over here? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Tell, can you tell us a little bit about the Achieve program and, and how you're involved with the Achieve program or what it does when we do? What Brandon does. Oh, and why? And so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I love Achieve because my friends actually work in 
and achieve and like Brandon is also like a good example because he is helping me figure out my scheduling stuff and to decide to actually break down my my assignments as well and that really helped me a lot. The way it works, or the way I think it, it works for, for my brain to think about it, is it's sort of like having home room. You have a place to go where you get to feel grounded, and there are people there that can um, make sure you're on track and doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and then there's a study hall period twice a week, um, which, or at least that's what it sounds like to me, um, <laughs> where there's guided help uh, for homework. Um, and so those are the pieces that I think have been instrumental. And what is instrumental um, is the, the support and the scaffolding that they're able to add into the, the coursework. Any other questions? Yeah. So Documented disability. Oh, yeah, documented disabilities. Is there anything else? Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not exactly <laughs> sure what else is required of it. To be an achieve, you have to be 18. You have to want to go to college because college is a choice. I mean, as you guys all know, they're going to college. You got to want this, or right? the work doesn't feel worth it. You got to want a job because we go to school to work afterwards, and you need to have a disability. Any other questions? Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. Uh, with all your great talents that you have, do you know what career um, you're interested in moving into? Well, I kind of have a passion for moving biology, so I'm going to move on to my career in the field of marine biology and oceanography. I'm not sure what that will be though. Yeah. yeah. Maybe work like for Noah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you want to um, talk about, I heard that you recently applied for an internship opportunity. Oh, do you yeah. want to share about what, where that is and what you might be doing there? Sure. Did you get it? Yeah. So I applied for an internship at the Mass Center. And I was going to pay for like for the next month because October has been a busy month for me. And I'm about to go out of town as well, but... What would you be doing at the mask? At the mask, I'm going to work with the, with the behind the scenes people and doing that system. Like cleaning out the tanks and feeding, and feeding the animals. And yeah. Yes, in the back. Can you also talk maybe about what experiences you had in the past, work experience, mm -hmm. volunteer experiences that led you to this path? Yes, it has been. Because I've been to a lot of aquariums. I actually, for my first birthday, actually, this happened in Florida. And for my, my first birthday, we went to this golfarium in Florida. and. I have to have my hands up on my mouth, and we had to go down to this platform. And first, the dolphins actually sing me a happy birthday song. <laughs> and more recently, have you done anything at an aquarium? Oh yeah, so recently I just I volunteered with the Saddle Aquarium, and. I said that I was done doing it because I've been so busy with other stuff in my life, like doing other, like, like public speaking, doing more speeches and talking publicly, like this. <laughs> oh, at the aquarium, I was a docent, but I've been answering questions from our, from, from our visitors that we were getting. Any other questions? 
Yes, in the back. So you've done a lot of amazing things, Kevin. Do you have one thing that's been your absolute That would have to be my passion, actually. Your most favorite um, memory from last year? Ah. My favorite memory from last year would have to be being at the White House. Because that was really overwhelming and like full of joy and full of love. It's just amazing seeing be at the White House and seeing him being Michelle Obama and the President Obama was just pretty amazing. So, yeah, that's my favorite memory of last year. No, this summer, as I should say. Yeah. Kevin, thank you for the presentation and thank you for coming and I think you're an amazing person. Uh, I just have one question for you, Mom. Uh, how have you handled all this celebrity? <laughs> <laughs> that we would take the opportunities as they came and we would you know roll with it and see what happened and luckily we've been able to take advantage of a lot of those opportunities um, and it's been just crazy I think um, being at the White House was uh, overwhelming I think that is the best word um, yeah. because we've been to DC before and done, done the touristy kind of things but we've never been into the White House and mm -hmm. then for you know the Obamas to be there, it was pretty amazing. And speaking at the UN um, was also amazing. Um, their, their caliber of people and the, to know that people around the world are thinking about how to make lives better for everyone um, was uh, a great experience also. I think um, being invited to the White House um, for the Beating the, the Odds event. A lot of the people that were there were college students, like a lot of the college students here that are either first time, um, first generation college students, people that have a lot of financial aid issues or people that are English as a second language or foster care issues. And the White House um, was able to broaden their definition of diversity enough to also include individuals with disabilities. So I thought that was um, great that we were on the radar. And to not take advantage of that wasn't really an option. So when that came up, it was like, OK, we'll rearrange whatever we have to in order to, to get our faces out there. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, uh, one last time. I guess, uh, before, uh, or I gotta say, when I finish talking, I will appreciate that uh, both of you say your names again. I just wasn't paying attention. But overall, what I want to say, and in this case, I want to talk to you, the mother. You know, uh, you definitely know that you've been blessed. Uh, but I also want to tell you that I admire you in so many ways. And I never want to forget you. I don't want to forget this moment. And I want to thank you both of you for giving us the opportunity to see this. Yes. Overwhelming for us also, I believe. It's overwhelming for me. And I admire you with your work. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. You want to say your name? Oh, I'm Devin, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Devin, Devin Adelman, and I'm Sue Adelman. Um, we, we had the opportunity to hear a lady named Karen Gaffney speak, and she also happens to have Down syndrome, and recently did a TEDx talk down in Portland. And one of her key phrases was that, that she is not the exception. She is one of the possibilities. And I thought that was such a powerful thing to say, because a lot of people will say, oh, well, that's the type of Down syndrome you have, you know, or you know, you're one of the few lucky ones that has less of an impact or what have you, but for full disclosure, we totally believe in inclusion. Devin was fully included through preschool, elementary, middle school. We didn't live in Washington State. Washington State is a very difficult place to go to school. And I think 
when 90 plus percent of the kids. 97. That, you know, 97. When 97 of the kids with Down syndrome are put into a contained classroom in kindergarten, you're off the bat limiting what their potential is. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's hard. Um, you know, I want to be able to take it, you know, responsibility for Devin, but Devin is determined, and Devin is the kid that it goes to, does all the work. It's crazy. Um, but I think we have had opportunities that we've been able to take advantage of, and that full inclusion was a huge starting point. And you have to lay that foundation if you're gonna be able to go on further education and, and be a productive employed individual and pay taxes and do all of those things where you're not living on assistance if you can, that, that it's a, a great path that everybody has to, to figure out. So, get in trouble. <laughs> Thank you. Yes? So for kids who did not have the opportunity to full inclusion because they were in school in the state of Washington, <laughs> do you have any suggestions for things they can do in a very short period of time if they want to pursue this path? What things should they be focusing on in the last couple of years of high school, even if they were in the summer of the I think pushing the system as much as you can, um, whether it is pushing the teachers or doing it at home. You know, if they're not getting as much uh, stimulation as you want in the classroom, then add things at home. There's, there are plenty of education sites that you can go on. Um, does that make it hard because you have to do it? Yes. Is it easy? No. Um, but uh, if you, believe in your kid and your kid is interested then, or your student, I shouldn't call you a kid anymore, <laughs> then it's what you have to do. I think that Washington is trying hard and I think that Seattle is starting to um, recognize some of its deficits. Um, it has a long story history of disability rights and the ADA was written in Washington State, believe it or not. Um, it was the, the groundwork for the federal work. Um, but I don't think it's gone further than that where it was in the 70s. And other states have definitely um, gone further and I think all states have problems and all public systems are different. Um, but Seattle's progressive. We can bring things forward. Can we say something about that frustration, the bump in the road? That sure. We if, you, if you want to mention that, you, you totally yeah. can. As, go ahead. OK, so when we first moved here to, to Washington State, we had this, this bump in the road. And it's for the school district and that actually looked at my diagnosis and not me and what I can do. They only looked at my Down syndrome and saying that I belong in this, in this, in this, in this contained classroom. But I actually proved them wrong by showing them a map that I can do. Like the Desi said, that I cannot read or write. And that truly just shocked me. And I said, okay, I'm gonna show you guys what I can do. I'm gonna draw you guys a map of, of Washington State and my hometown, Michigan. And I proved them wrong. I colored in, I pointed to where Michigan and where Seattle is. And then they just said, okay, we don't need her, need her anymore. Get out of our city, so we had to fight. Yeah. And to that special educator, she did say, hmm, maybe you don't belong in my contained life skill class. Um, and that was the beginning of us not fighting, but working with the Seattle Public Schools to find a better setting. Um, and a better program that worked for them. And that's where my dad actually decided to write books about it. 
He actually uh, wrote a series of books called Sam's Top Secret Journal. And uh, Sam, and Sam, it, it's actually based on the frustration that we had, and Sam is actually based on me and what I do, like, like whatever Sam does in the book, and he was real, and what I experienced, and that was really helpful. And he also wrote this medical book as well, if you want to mention Doing a shameless plug here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, there's a children's series of books called Sam's Top Secret Journal um, that I think when we were in Michigan, we were pretty complacent not to um, be advocates. But when we came to Michigan, or came from Michigan to Washington, and we realized that there were a lot of misconceptions, my husband decided to write a children's book, which is a chapter book that's probably about a fourth grade le reading level that, ha that stars a person with Down syndrome in an attempt to get those books into the elementary schools to show what kids are capable of. And it's not a true story of Devin, but everything that the character does in the books is able is based on different abilities that Devin has. So, sorry for the shameless book. <laughs> in the medical book? Yes, and there is also a medical book that's called Sam, or that's called Trispiro. It's a medical thriller um, that is also based on a lot of the genetic uh, research that they're doing at this time. Yes. Okay, so Devin, you're very accomplished, you're ambitious, and you keep giving back, right? So um, you told me before, I mean, you told all of us that you enjoy um, proving the doubters, the haters wrong. And so is that like your big motivation, is that part of like your big motivation to keep facing bigger and bigger challenges? Yes, it is, yes. The doors for others. Yes, just open, just, 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 just open doors and see where that leads you. Yeah. Um, let's say I have. Oh, I have vanilla. You want to say something about that? Okay. Um, in those situations, just 
you know, advocacy is it's this big thing, but it can start just with yourself. Um, I just wanted to let people know that Access Services and Achieve, we have staff here to talk with students. It can be completely confidential, but if you're struggling and you feel like you need some support, the first step to being a self-advocate is just to ask for help. Um, and it's okay. It's, it's not a shameful thing. And I think that's one of the reasons why we want Deb to come here today is that we're all struggling. We're all reaching, hopefully, for our dreams, and we all need help. So just encourage students to, to come see us. And we're building 99. Uh, so it is in Kent, but it's not too, too much of a walk. Any other questions? Yeah. So I know that you mentioned that you're going out of town, <laughs> and it's like the middle of the border, basically. So do you want to tell us like where you were going? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I'm going to Denver because I'm going to be a model for the be beautiful, beautiful fashion show that the Global Dance Foundation is putting on. close to noon and so I was going to wrap it up and I also want to let you know everybody in here that uh, there's a new club on campus, a unified club, uh, and that the unified mission is to live, uh, play unified to live unified, people with and without disabilities doing things together. Deb mentioned that you won gold in the soccer tournament as did the Highline College unified soccer team. Uh, last year, but the Unified Club's first meeting of this year is today at 2.30 in building 19, room 205, and I think we're all welcome. Uh, so, please, and Deb, thank you so much. It's, every time I hear you speak, it is an honor to learn more and more about your journey, and what you have with determination and motivation, that is the tool that will make any one of us succeed in this room toward our goals. And so, I wish we could bottle it, and share it with all of us because that determination determination to prove what you can do and the trying so hard to get to where you want to do it's amazing thank you you're welcome